Hey there, Jeff Fritz here, and I want to talk through the next step in working with evolving an API using .NET 6 and minimal APIs. And this is invol involving working with the repository pattern and injecting uh, requirements into our APIs so that they can get a little bit smarter without having to think about all the different ways that they might have to interact with and massage the data in different um, tools and business rules that you may introduce that your APIs need. And here in this samples that we wrapped up last time, our API knows how to read from this file here, this JSON file. And when we evolve our application, it might not actually be reading from a JSON file. It might read from a database or another web service or a queue or something. So let's move this. Let's introduce the repository pattern and use a little bit of dependency injection to make this API a little dumber so it only knows to go get contacts that we're going to paint on the screen. So first thing I want to do to clean this up and make it a little bit easier is I'm going to scroll down here to my contact object and I'm going to hit control dot and move this type to another file to simplify my program here. Next, I want to introduce a repository class for my contacts so I can just call get on it and retrieve that collection of contacts. So let's create a new class down here called contact repository. And inside of this, I'm going to create one method that returns an ienumerable of contact objects. And I'm just going to call it get. Now to get those contact objects is just this bit right here. And I'll get rid of, well, let's leave that the way it is right there. And I'll paste that in format the code a little bit, and there's the exact same code we had before, just deserialize and return that data. Okay, that's easy to do. Now, it's giving me a yellow underline there because it's possibly null content coming back. We know better, so we can actually put a question mark here to indicate that it could be null content coming back, but we know it's not going to be. So you can skip that check. All right. Now I'm going to return the contacts here, but I want to change up. I want to redirect so I get the contacts out of my contact repository. So I can tell my application here to, I can quite simply say new contact repository dot get right there and get the data, create this contact repository, and serve it. That's nice. That works. But we can make this even easier using dependency injection. So what if we go up here and inside of our builder, inside of here we say builder dot services add transient and I'm going to add my contact repository. So whenever you request a contact repository, the add transient statement says create a new one of these classes and serve it along to wherever it's needed. So down here in my contacts, I will define as an input parameter to this anonymous method on line 10, I will define contact repository and I'll just call it repository. Now, instead of saying new contact repository here on line 12, I can replace that with just repository. And I'll move this to another file. And now my interaction here is getting easier to read. In fact, I can get rid of that contacts entirely, place it right there, and now my API is even simpler. Let's run this and take a look at how it works. There it is, compiled and running. Refreshed in my browser, and there's my two records again. So, we learned how to refactor a little bit to introduce a repository object. We learned how to inject that object using dependency injection. We registered it with our services 
inside of ASP.NET Core. And then we're requesting that object as an input argument to our map get method. This is just the start here. I'm going to introduce and show you another optimization feature in our next episode of this series that's going to show you how to make the code inside that program file even smaller. We'll see you then.